about a month ago, Farm reached out to me and asked if we should do a video debate collab where we basically talk about whether or not you need more skill or more time to get on leaderboards. And initially, well, I thought, well, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty simple answer. But the more I thought about it, the more complicated it became. And that's something I want to explore in this video. I want to explore what exactly the question means. What exactly are you asking in that question? And what exactly is the right answer, or at least for my subjective opinion? Fire will also have a video on the same topic discussing on why you need more skill rather than time, while I will be discussing the opposite. You can stop my video and watch his, or you can watch mine and then watch his. It doesn't really matter, but I do think watching both is recommendable. I am of the opinion that you require more skill than you require time to get on leaderboards or at least a somewhat decent balance. Now before we start off with the video, if you want to watch the whole thing because this is going to be a longer video than normal, you can just go ahead and just go to the timestamps in the description or in the video timeline and you can either choose to watch this intro, watch some of the interviews I'll be having with some uh, well-known leaderboard players. I will also be doing a mini test of sorts, comparing, say, an average player with skill and an average player with no skill but a lot of time, just to see how many more wins each of those players will get in a shorter time span. With that being said, I want to first ask you guys, what exactly do you define as skill? Now, of course, you could go ahead and say, well, you know, skill is being a little bit player or skill is beating a little bit player or, you know, skill can be very many things. But I don't think skill is that standardized. I think skill is very subjective. For example, I could say, well, I am very good at clicking my mouse. I can click a 7 CPS compared to my dad who can click maybe 3 or 4 or 5 because he doesn't really practice he just uses it to click a website or something or just normal daily use compared to him I'm obviously way better and compared to him I've got more skill at clicking my mouse if you really want to call ahead and call it that but if you compare me with somebody that is very good at butterfly clicking or drag clicking and that get like 20 30 40 50 CPS I am a complete noob. So I think skill is dependent on how many people you know and how many people you play against. If you've only ever played against three players, one is really bad and one is really good, then you can say you're in the middle. But if you play with a lot more good players, you'll go lower and lower down the list of who has most skill. If you play against a lot of really bad players, you'll go higher up on the skill, um, I guess, chart compared to again if you play against a lot of really good players ideally the best skill chart would be to have a balance of bad players intermediate players and really good players that way it's very easy for you to move yourself up and down the list of who you can beat consistently and who you can't but since we can't really do that and you just have to base it off of playing against other players it's very difficult because a lot of players sometimes make mistakes. The people I interviewed also said this, and I would agree with that. If you beat somebody that's good, it doesn't mean you can consistently beat them. It just means that you've beat them in that moment. You had played them, you just maybe had a, a better strategy, or you just saw a situation in a different perspective than they did, and that made you win that specific fight. So skill is very subjective, but in my opinion, I'd say somebody with a... 10 win loss ratio is very skilled obviously you can say oh well mobile players you know if you're good at mobile then you can still like beat every lobby or if you're just decent you know the mobile lobbies they're absolutely disastrous and you know that's fair but you're still somewhat skilled but i guess this video is going to be more geared towards somebody that is on a controller or a pc because it's a bit easier since i have less variables to worry about now as i mentioned before i want to do a really small experiment and i want you to keep in mind this is extremely subjective I changed um, this just based off of what I found was fair. You might see, you might think that, oh, well, I could have done this and this, and, you know, there would have been an entirely different result, and that's fine. You can do your own experiment uh, and, you know, change up the values. But I have made a three-day test, basically, and I have two um, players. I have player one and player two. Player one is a really good player, let's say he doesn't play a lot because he can't really play a lot anymore, but he's on leaderboards, he has a lot of skill, and he can still win a decent amount. He can still win He can still win 15 uh, times an hour, and he plays between 1 and 3 hours. Player two is the opposite. He has basically no experience, but he has a lot of free time. He gets 4 wins an hour, but for that he plays 5 to 10 hours a day. So as you can see right here in this document, I have a, a, a little list here of every single day. On the first day, the first player wins 30 wins, 
and player 2 wins 28. On day 2, player 1 gets 45 wins, player 2 gets 40. On day 3, player 1 gets 15 wins, and player 2 gets 20 wins. Now, as you can see, on day 1, I took the middle value roughly um, for both players. I said, okay, these guys played, um, say, the average of their time. On day two, I gave them the, the, the max play time that they that I wrote down. On day three, I put the minimum of how much they could play. And as you can see in the end result, player one has two more wins than player two has. Now, this is just to show that, ob again, obviously, if I change the values, if I change the player two value to five wins an hour, then we'd have a completely different story. Player two would have more wins. But if I also change player one values to give him one more extra extra hour, the values would also be extremely different. So just by changing the values just a little bit, you can get an entirely different result. I try to make this as fair as possible. You know, I try to give player two a real lack of skill because a lot of people, they always, you know, say, oh, this person just no lives. Oh, this person has no skill. But you still have to have a lot of skill to win games. Now, I did this test on a PC platform because... Obviously, you know, I'm not going to ignore mobile lobbies. A lot of people, you know, they, they, they do get mad because mobile lobbies are extremely easy. It's extremely easy to grind. A lot of leaderboard players um, are leaderboard players because of a mobile lobby's existence. And while I think it is somewhat fair, I can see why it's, it's extremely easy. You know, not a lot of mobile players actually queue those lobbies. They are extremely empty, empty, extremely quick. If you're somewhat decent, you can win, you know, really easily because most of them, they don't even know how to, how to buy any items. And obviously I can see that. So that's why I chose, you know, a, a PC player for this because I think that's the, just the fairest platform to choose some controller players uh can mobile queue so i think that's just you know unfair so i'm not going to use a controller player as this example that's why i chose pc players but this is just to show that you need to have a good average if player one had way more time um, and you know got a lot of wins that you know he'd, he'd be getting 100 wins a day if player two was really bad and didn't have a lot of time you know they'd be getting way less wins so you have on the one hand the extreme of a player being good but not being able to play and on the other hand a player that has that has a stupidly high amount of time to play but he just can't win at all and both these players get around the same number of wins which obviously shows again you have to have an average if we took a player that had more skill than player two but could play less then they'd probably also get around the same amount of wins. They would probably maybe get 70, maybe 60 at the end of the third day, probably a bit less because they can't win as much as player one, but they have way more time than him, and I think it'd be a bit lower than the average that I have for player one and player two. But it would still show that you need a good average to be able to play a lot. I, I genuinely don't think that all of our leaderboards are just people that are really bad but just no life. There was also another argument I want to go in later, but I just I just wanted to make this experiment to show you guys that I don't think that somebody with zero skill could get on leaderboards after, I don't know, after one or two months. I, I think that you need a really good balance of both. But I mean, just look at the leaderboards yourself. I guarantee you that, I don't know, 90% of players on there got there because they had a good balance of skill and time. I'm not saying that there aren't players with a relative low skill level that manage to get on leaderboards. I think a solo's leaderboard is a really good example. It has some players that really should not be on there. But a leaderboard isn't a top 10 list. A lot of people see leaderboards as a top 10 best player list. That's not that list. If I were to make a top 10 best betters player list, almost none of the players on the betters uh, leaderboards would be on there because a lot of the really good players you know they just don't play a lot a lot of the really good players they just played for a couple months and then they got bored because it was too easy and then they moved on to a different game mode or a different server and a lot of people they just have a completely different interpretation of what a leaderboard is and the people on there are you know they're just all no lives and i would just completely disagree and it's always annoying to just see somebody that just looks at leaderboard sees one bad player and says okay, this little board is irrelevant, they're all bad. If that person managed to get on there, you know, everybody else must be really bad. Because you're really taking away the achievement of the player itself. Now that I've stated my argument or my points, I'll move on to some interviews. I interviewed some pretty well-known people, and I also interviewed Firen, whom I'm collabing with, just so I can have more answers and a bit more perspective. A lot of the questions I gave, I felt were like were really good, and a lot of the answers were actually really interesting as well. So I hope you guys enjoy. 
Who is somebody that you know that is a good example of a literal player with skill? Realistically, probably like mm, you or Impossible, and then Torkish, like one of those two. Just to name like a few, I would say Ben Miller, and then uh, Christ, um, and Cloudy Sheets. I feel like those three. Are... <laughs> How do you define skill? I think skill is really dependent on how good your strategies are and if you have game knowledge to where you can like react to uh, certain situations well and what your like win rate is depending on if it's tough situations if you kill a leaderboard player sometimes it's uh could just be luck or like a fluke so you can't really depend skill on that but i really take um a lot of game strategy uh dependent on that I, that's what I say is skill. Like, if you're like actually have a lot of game knowledge and like you can uh, react to a lot of the different situations that you could possibly go into. If that person beats a leaderboard player, well, if it's like just randomly queuing public lobbies and parties and all that, like anything could happen. There's different things that could happen in there, and it's not really a fair one v one. So. If you kill someone in like a public, it's kind of hard to say, oh, I'm better than him because there's a lot of different factors that goes into that. Maybe he could have sharp, you have prod, but you have no sharp and he has no prod. So that all just plays a role. If you, I guess, really want to find out who is quote unquote better, a, a fair 1v1 might do it. But then again, someone might be better at like bridging, have more game sense, but can't click as fast. So it just depends really on their background. but. That all depends on, like, I'm not sure. It's like, it all just depends, really. I think maybe, like, top 20%. Because if you're skillful, then that means you know more knowledge about a game or any something than an average player. So it maybe be 20% that knows more about a game than the average player. Would you say there are more skilled players than unskilled players percentage-wise on leaderboards? I would say more percentage of skilled. It's hard to say right now because I haven't like really fought or known most of the people on the leaderboard since leaderboards are either completely dead or people just get on there and that you haven't heard of before and like they're not really into the community. So it's hard to tell if they're like good or if they're just, you know, playing a long time to be there. But I, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there are definitely more skilled leaderboards players than unskilled leaderboards players because most of the leaderboards players know a lot about the game and they have more experience than regular players, which means that they they, they have a lot of experience. So even the unskilled players on the leaderboards, they have experience about the game. Has another game gotten more skilled players over time or less? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. It's stayed around the same. I would say it's gotten a little bit less seeing as the new uh, introductions to, like, what's it called? Like, bridge and duels and stuff like that. Like, all the new players just have a lot more time on their hands instead of, like, being really good at the game. And also the win requirements are a lot higher. Mm, it's hard to tell. Um, I feel like the quality has fallen down a little bit. Like, before the le old leaderboards players, like, from last year, they were really hard to beat. But that's when I was like completely new. So I, I can't really base that all off. But now since I'm really familiar, I feel like I could beat most of the leaderboards players on there. And I haven't played Bedrock. I'm kind of rusty. I'm like washed up. So like, I guess that says a, a little bit of something. But on Bedrock, there isn't much of a high roof for skill. So it caps at a certain spot. So yeah, it's very difficult to tell, but I feel like there's, I feel like it's less uh, skilled players. Like there's, there's not, there's, there's like not a lot of Ben Millers basically. Like, yeah, we don't have a lot of Ben Millers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like imagine you had like Ben Miller one, Ben Miller two. Ben Miller <laughs> oh, Ben Miller one's on leaderboards now, guys. <laughs> What to do what requires the most and least amount of skill to get on? Hmm. I would say either Bedwars or Skywars for the most amount of skill needed, and then uh, 
probably duels for the least amount. Mm. The most go. Mm. What is there? There's Sky Wars, Bed Wars, The Bridge, Duels. Then we're not counting the other ones. Um, I I <laughs> I think Sky Wars has needs more skill because you need to loot fast and you need to know more about your surroundings and your hot bar is always different and it's like always messed up. And for me, inventory management in Skywars is like such a pain. It always gets to my head, which is why I can't really play Skywars because I feel a little bit too slow, especially looting. is like, it just gets to me. So I feel like Skywars, if the like lobby was more feel in other games, it's like a really hard, it's like a hard leaderboard basically, but Skywars isn't that much played. So like Bedwars is probably like the second <clears throat> hardest because there's a lot of people who play Bedwars. There's like a thousand people on Bedwars at times. There's going to be fuller games, which will make the, you know, it lasts long. And there's more people playing it. So there's bound to be another sweat. So you got, you know, got to fight that, blah, blah, blah. So I, I feel like jump, like the bridge is just, yeah, down there on skill. You know, I'm sorry, but like sometimes when you 1v1 them, they just jump bridge or bypass. And it's like, what? I'd say a uh, skill. The most skill wise leaderboard probably is Bed Wars because it requires PvP, good knowledge about the game, and it also requires a lot of game sense. And then the least amount of skill that a leaderboard requires is Bridge. Is literally Bridge is the least remind of least amount of skill required for anything because it's just right click one. Do you think some leaderboards have skilled players without good PvP? Uh, I would say so, yeah. That's hard to, like, judge because essentially another game is just a minigame server, and but the most popular minigames is Bedwars, which is a PvP aspect, so you'd think, oh, he's a really good player, that means he's really good at PvP as well. <clears throat> but that also depends on people's mindsets and what they think about a really good player. But for me personally, when I think of a really good player, I feel like overall they're good. Like, they're good at bridging... PvP, game sense, everything. Yeah, they need, everything has to be like, you know, average and like really good. You can outshine some others, but like, I feel like PvP is definitely like needed to be considered good. But I don't know anybody who's bad at PvP and I consider good. So, yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Like, there's um, factions, creative leaderboards, I think, and Murder Mystery, and there's also Bridge. You can play in any of those games and just play it a lot gain a lot of experience and you can be a skilled player and not pvp in those game modes do you think kdr is a good way to show skill not really kdr isn't really dependent on how good you are uh you could just get a lot of kills and then just not die very often but it also depends on the game modes you play like if you're a skywars main and you have a high kdr then it could be like it could show your skill level but then like bed wars if you just don't lose a lot it could take you like you know 20 game uh, 20 minutes to finish a game and you could die like countless amounts of times per game but still win and just not get final killed and get a good kdr realistically it's not really dependent on stats whether you can tell somebody's skill or not like you, if you look at somebody's uh statistics and they have you know bad statistics but they're a really good player the you would assume that they're a bad player but in reality, they could actually be good. I would say it's really not possible to look at their stats unless they just have a like really high amount. Like most of the leaderboard players have a really high amount of stats, and you can just tell that they're a good player. Then uh, you could take a lower end player with not as many stats who could be good, and then you're just like, nah, he's not good because he doesn't have as many stats. So it like it could go it could go either way. Mm, KDR. Um, KDR is like, I guess it's subjective. It kind of shows skill. It kind of doesn't. Like, let's say there's like there's a few people on Nether Games with really bad KDR. It's like a two, three, but they're they're skilled. You know, they know how to, they have game sense. They've been playing a game, and you know they know what they're doing. But they have a bad KDR from like way before. So like, I don't really think KDR really determines if you're a good player or not. But it's used as like a base, like. It's like a universal thing to help determine to like know if you're good or not. Mm, yeah, I definitely say I've gotten more skilled leader, uh, more skilled players 
and leaderboards players because back in July or August of last year, um, you could queue into a Bed Wars game and there'd be like two minute games. And now games can last two minutes to six minutes because there's a lot of people grinding, there's a lot of leaderboards players, and people who have played the game enough to know that um, you can win by PvPing really well. Well, not really, because mobile players can just rack up a ton of a ton of deaths because they're they're normal they're mobile, and then they can just die really easily. But they can be really good at the same time, and you can do duels a lot and gain a lot of deaths. But you can still be really good as like Ben Miller. So no, KDR is not a good way to show skill. What leaderboard is the easiest and the hardest to get on? That's really dependent on whether the people on the leaderboards are actually active or not. Which I'm trying to think. I would say probably the hardest leaderboard to get on right now is either Bedwars or Credits. Because it just takes a lot of time and you have to like actually win the games. I mean, for Credits, it actually might be the hardest leaderboard to get on uh, in, the, in its current state. Obviously, if you start at the beginning and play with everybody, it'll be easier to get on it and stay on it. But if you were to try and start now and get onto a leaderboard, credit would probably be the hardest because it's just so much and you have to like actually win games and do a lot in the game to get a large amount of credits. And then the easiest to get on? Probably duels. Because it just takes a lot of time. I mean, it just takes time. That's literally it. it obviously, it takes some skill because you have to actually win the games, but it's really easy just to win a 1v1 because 90% of the time, you're not actually versing somebody who knows what they're doing. So you could just sit and play for, you know, like two or three hours a day, and in a few months, you'll be on the leaderboard. I feel like the easiest leaderboards for the game modes, not like levels and all that, I feel like it would be duels. Because the leaderboards on duels right now is super inactive. And if you dedicate like a month of your life, you'd probably be at the way top. Because if you're really good at duels and you just nonstop play duels all day on NG, you can probably get like 500 wins per day on duels. Maybe that's unrealistic. I never grinded that much, but it seems that easy where all you have to do is Q sumos, you know, and you'll be able to just one tap them, maybe even like hit them a few times into the void and you'll be queuing. So it's like a minute, it's like a win every minute, basically, in a way. So, yeah, I feel like duels will be super easy to get on. But I feel like Bedwars is a little bit difficult, since it's Nethergame's top um, most played minigame. There's, like, more people who are looking to grind it. So it'll be, like, harder to secure, maybe more comp competitive to get on there. But definitely duels the easiest, and Bedwars would be more difficult. Probably the hardest leaderboard is global because it requires more time than any other leaderboards on the list. Um, maybe because you can do duels or bed wars, I'd say, because bed wars games takes a while. And the easiest leaderboard is probably bridge because you just spam right click button. What is something that other games can do to make skill more apparent in their game modes? Um, I mean. That's a good question. Uh, definitely what you just said for the win streak leaderboards. I think that's, that would be a good idea just to show, like, for Bedwars and Skywars, that would be a good leaderboard to show a decent amount of skill. Like, if you could just win however many consistent games in a row. Obviously, for duels, that can not really. But, like, showing it for, like, uh, Skywars, Bedwars, that would be a good idea. And then I was also thinking uh, more of like an ELO system uh, with everybody having their own like ranking and amount of ELO. And if you verse a uh, game with a lot of high ranking ELO players in it, you would get more ELO and like basically just a ranking system. Would you agree with the hypothesis that if a bad player beats a leaderboard player, they will think that leaderboards are all just really bad players? I mean... It can definitely obscure people's views on what skill actually really is. I mean, there's also a lot of luck involved with like winning games and beating players. It definitely can affect people's view on it, though. Hmm. I guess, personally, me, if I beat someone on the leaderboards, I'd be like, oh, okay, so I'm kind of better than them. And if I ever queue with them again and they beat me, I'd be like, oh, okay, so they are kind of skilled. 
I guess it just depends on who you, on you, like who you are, your personality, and how you see things. If you beat someone, you may think, oh, they're shit, and like, oh, maybe the rest of the leaderboards are also bad. But me personally, if I beat someone who's on the leaderboards and I was like a non or whatever, I'll be like, oh, okay, so I'm, I kind, I guess I'm kind of better than him, but. But, like, I would still be, like, cautious of other people, see if they're better than him, you know? Like, if they have a higher skill, in a way. So, like, I wouldn't, like, quickly assume, oh, everyone's trash and all that. But it just all depends on you, on how you see things, really. Well, yeah, definitely, because they saw how easily a leaderboard player could be beaten. Or not as easily, but, like, they saw that leaderboard players are beatable, which means it gives a perspective of the skill leaderboard players have. In reality, leaderboards players could have been, you know, throwing. They could have been feeling off that day. Would you agree that leaderboard players have a better understanding of what skill means than somebody who, say, isn't on leaderboards? For the most part, yes. I mean, for if you were to look for someone with a decent math skill, you would look to leaderboards. That'd be, like, the first thing that you go to. Thank you again, Ben, Cloudy, and Fern for taking the time to interview with me. Now, to end up the video, I want you guys to ask yourself this one question. If you still think that a lot of players on leaderboards are bad and just got on there because they just have time and have no skill, I want you to ask this question. Do you think that if somebody were to draw a human face once every single day for an entire year, do you think that person would improve or draw the same exact face if anything maybe even worse if you think that person would improve drawing that face over time then then i mean you, you probably know where i'm going with this you'll also have to agree that if somebody plays the same game every single day for a whole year they're bound to improve like let's take me for example when i started off in other games i had a 4 KDR, I had, I think, maybe a 0 0.25 win-loss ratio, something around that, really bad, I was an absolute trash player, um, and, I, and I wasn't improving for a week or two, if anything, I was getting worse, uh, I used to queue doubles with my sister, really fun times, a lot of no nostalgia, um, but after a while, I decided to just have a different mentality when playing, Whenever I would lose a game, I would record. Uh, whenever I would play a game, I would record that game. And if I lost, I would stop playing. I would rewatch the recording and see what mistake I made and where I could have improved. Because a lot of the reasons you lose a game isn't actually because you lost a fight or because. Uh, you know, you, you couldn't make that block clutch. A lot of the times, at least what I found is, because I lost the game was because I didn't buy an, an iron sword when I had enough gold. I didn't buy iron armor when I had enough gold. I didn't buy a fireball, and instead I bought, bought two stacks of blocks, which were very unnecessary, and that could have saved me the game. I didn't make a bed defense at the start of the game, which later made me lose the game because I didn't have a bed defense. I would wait for two diamonds instead of just taking the one that I had and buy a trap, which can give you a good warning of when you would lose your bed, which doesn't make you lose your bed mid-fight, and then because you're panicking and there's a huge bed broken text on your screen, you're gonna lose that fight and get final. A lot of the reasons why people lose games is because of the decisions they make before they actually start losing the game. For example, the very small decision of whether or not you will rush with 8 iron or you will wait for 2 extra can actually decide an entire game. And that mentality of looking at every single small mistake that you made and trying to improve on that is what eventually Im improved my gameplay. And looking back, I would have probably never expected that that method of you know, checking what mistakes I made and improving on them would really improve me this much. And even now, I still think I can improve a ton. I still make a lot of mistakes in games, and I'm still a long, long way from perfection, but I think that's what motivates me to keep playing and keep improving. And it's also what makes playing a game fun at the end of the day for me. It's striving for that perfection that I know is pretty much impossible to achieve, but yet I still go for it. And I think if somebody just has that mentality of, how do I improve or how do I beat that player, they will eventually become better than that player that they want to beat or eventually they'll improve enough to maybe be equal 
or they're like just improved enough to be known as a good player. So if you see somebody that is bad and you see them be on leaderboard, don't judge them and say, oh, this person is bad and they'll stay bad and they don't deserve to be on leaderboards because in a couple months, they could improve and be better than you and be better than, I don't know, maybe the best player on other games and they could have a well-deserved leaderboard spot. You just never know. I think if, if somebody that is really bad gets on leaderboard, they have such great potential to be a good player. They have the game sense. They've played enough games. They just lack the mentality of wanting to improve. A lot of people also, you know, have a bias against leaderboard players. For example, if you beat a leaderboard player, you are more inclined to saying that leaderboards don't require skill. For example, let's say you beat somebody like Ben Miller. Um, let's say it was luck, it was a fireball, or I don't know, maybe it was a fair fight and you just had prots, maybe you had a KB stick or something. You just beat him and you feel confident. You're more inclined to say that leaderboards don't require skill than to say that they do require skill. If you constantly lose to the same leaderboard player over and over again, you'll say leaderboards require skill, or you're more inclined to. But if you get lucky a couple of times and beat somebody, then you will most likely say that. I'll link a document in the description below where we basically asked 33 players, um, which one third roughly were leaderboard players, whether or not they require skill to be a leaderboard player um, or not. And of the 11 players that we asked if it requires skill, seven answered it does, four answered it didn't. So it really depends a lot on why you would think leaderboards require more time than it requires skill. A leaderboard player is more inclined to say that it requires skill because, you know, they've, they've grinded, they have improved themselves to have deserved that spot. But there also could be somebody that's a bridge leaderboard player and knows how easy it is to get on there. There are some leaderboards, and I'm very aware that don't require any skill and just require a lot, a lot of time. I'm just saying that somebody with more skill and less time is equal or almost equal to somebody with no skill and a lot of time. But, a, but if a person with a lot of time and no skill has a mentality of improvement, they will at some point become a good player. And I think if anything, the takeaway of this video should be that if you see somebody that's bad and gets on leaderboard, don't trash that player. Don't say, oh, that player is bad. That player is terrible. That, does not, that player does not deserve a leaderboard spot. Instead, try to have the mentality, okay, this player is not good right now, but they could become good. Not anybody can be on leaderboards. Not somebody with a lot of skill but no time can make it. Not somebody with no skill and a lot of time. It has to be a balance. You have to have a good amount of skill and a good amount of time. If you don't have any of the two, then you just won't make it. Those players from those two extremes that have made it are rare exceptions. They're abnormalities. It's not something that you see every single day on a leaderboard. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you also want to check out Farron's video, then you can go do that. Uh, Fire will probably make a lot of good points as well. Also try to keep it civil in the comments. I know a lot of people will be like, this video is BS or I don't understand anything you're saying. You're completely wrong and I understand that, um, you know, a lot of people have different subjective opinions or they have different experiences with which might change their opinion. So let's try to keep it as civil as possible. But I hope this video was somewhat informative and I hope it was somewhat well made. If you enjoyed it, then a like would be appreciated. And if you want to see more content like this, then uh, subscribe because yes, all right. I hope you guys see you too. Yes, to tomorrow. Yes, bye.